Welcome to the Voice of Senior Care. I'm Morgan. And I'm Kiana. And we're bringing families and the caregiving community together. Friendly Voices, the The Senior Senior Care Podcast. Podcast. Thank you for joining us again at Friendly Voices, the Senior Care Podcast. My name is Kiana James and my co-host, Morgan Williams, and we're coming to you today talking about seniors and decluttering. And we know that's a very, very hot topic. We see a lot going on as it pertains to that. But I want to introduce you to our special guest, Elizabeth Strauss. And we're going to, for this first segment, find out a little bit more about Elizabeth And then we're going to talk about some tips for seniors and how they can declutter and then go a little bit more into specifics about her company and how her company and her services can actually help your loved one. So Elizabeth, tell us a little bit about you as a person, first of all, who you are, and how did you get into senior care? Absolutely. So um, I have lived in the Houston area now for over 20 years. Um, I went to Sam Houston State University, just a little bit north of Huntsville. I got a very oddly specific degree in criminal justice with an emphasis in child abuse and family neglect. Well, that's far away from where very you're Very far away, right? <laughs> like, so I, how I ended up here is, is very interesting, but I have actually loved organizing people since the third grade. I would go over for play dates and help my friend get their closet organized. <laughs> and I didn't realize at the time that only one of us was having the time of our lives. <laughs> And the other person, um, I guess their parents really liked that I came over. Yeah, I'm um, sure they did. <laughs> My husband would probably like if you come over. I, like, sitting still has never been something that's been enjoyable for me. And taking something that is absolute chaos and turning it into like function and efficiency has always just felt like I, the only thing I can think is like how like a painter feels when they're finally getting yeah. to paint their masterpiece. When I'm actually quietly organizing someone, I'm hearing symphony music play. <laughs> um, so it's just, it's something that makes me feel alive. It makes me feel like I'm helping people and it just gives me kind of purpose to my life and I really love it. Um, so I was in the corporate world. I was a corporate accountant at Chevron Phillips. Um, I sat An in- accountant? Yes, a corporate accountant. <laughs> wow, okay. Yes, yeah. So I sat in a very great cubicle for uh, nine hours a day because I worked a 980 schedule. So I'd work nine hour days and I'd get every other Friday off. Um, So I just got to the point one day where I was like, I don't think I can sit in this cubicle (laughs) and pay another dimethyl disulfide invoice or debate that it was billed at 10 cents a pound when it should have been billed at eight cents a pound. So I sat down and I made a list of if I won the lottery tomorrow (laughs) and I spent all the money on all of the things that I wanted and traveled to all of the places that you ever want to travel, What would I do after I did all of those things to feel fulfilled as a human being, to feel like I still had purpose in this world? And I made a list of everything that I could ever do, and it really came down to being active, helping people, and something to do with organizing. So I called every professional organizing company I could find, and I said, hello, I'd really love to come and organize for you. And all of them said, I'm sorry, that's not something we do. You just start your own organizing business and you go out and get clients. And then sometimes if you need two people, you'll call another organizer that you know, like, and trust, and then they'll come and help you, but you don't ever really like build a company. So with no other option, I went out and I started a business and thankfully I ran into somebody that worked at the small business development center. And I told them my plan because of what all of the other organizers had told me. And bless him if he did not take my hand and almost go like, there, there, there. (laughs) That's a terrible idea. Here's a couple books. Here's how you write a business plan. Here's some things to know to really grow a business, not just have a job. And so I'm very grateful that that encounter happened. And um, I started, um, I had the LLC in March of 2017, so um, five years now. And then I left the corporate world in June of 2017 to take it full time. Um, And so... I grew from a team of one, what I call a solopreneur, where it was just me, (laughs) myself, and I doing the client consultations, phone calls, 
you know, billing, invoicing, physical work, to now we have almost 30 people on our team. Almost 30. Yes, ma'am. Wow. So, so awesome. um, it's taken mm -hmm. a lot of absolute blood, sweat, and tears. I used to have a favorite spot in my closet where I would cry on those really <laughs> hard days. Yeah. I have one of those too. Yeah. I need to go to the favorite um, you know, you actually get, you know, like you'll cut yourself on a hanger or something. So I've actually put in the blood and then, you know, we would organize garages in the month of August. So the, the very real sweat has been there as well. So everything that our team members that go out in the field and they do every day, day in and day out, I did that in the very beginning. I laid all of the groundwork. So I'm like, you know, I'll never ask y'all to do something that I haven't done myself. And on the particular dirty jobs, I'll jump in and do the dirtiest work. Um, to make sure that the team knows, like, I'm a part of this team. Yeah. It's not me saying, like, hey, can you go, like, do something with that gross stuff? I'm jumping in to help yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, that's, that's amazing. And as a fellow entrepreneur, <laughs> I get that blood sweat. <laughs> yes. and it's a very real thing. I think it's very outstanding. Like, when you came and we were talking, I asked if you were a franchise. You did a setup like a franchise, and she's an independent like we are, and I think that's just amazing. It's it's a whole nother level <laughs> to build something and have to brand it and, and not have any outside help. That's, mm -hmm. that's, that is blood, sweat, and tears. It is extremely hard. So definitely want to say congratulations. Well, thank you. Now, how long did you say you've been doing this? Uh, this is our fifth year in business. Oh, fifth um, year in business. But this... Uh, my whole life. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't think as a toddler I was like organizing, but um, definitely since the third grade I've, I've made people pick up. But yeah, five years professionally as an LLC in the state of Texas. <laughs> so is your house just like completely organized? <laughs> <laughs> so it depends on the day. I would say 99% of the time, yes, but it's because I know that I function well in a really organized environment. Okay. My husband full-time works at home. I, you know, some days I'm in the field, some days I'm at home. Yeah. Um, I just know that I thrive well in a well-organized environment. But a big thing, uh, organizing is very key. You want to make sure that you're putting the right things back in the right place. But before organizing, um, you definitely want to focus on the word declutter because yeah. so many times people are disorganized because there isn't a space for the thing to go back to. So while I really do focus on keeping my home very organized and I know that I thrive very well in that kind of environment, the big keyword is declutter. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm constantly making sure that my clothes still fit. There's still clothes that I put on. You know, I, I go through with my organizer eye in the kitchen and I'm like, when's the last time we used an immersion blender? When's the last time we used whatever the specific gadget is? And the, I, I'm on a first name basis, not to brag about, you know, first name basis, but I'm on the first name basis with my local donation centers because I'm constantly pulling up like, here y'all go. And, you know, I have a very busy, active 18 month old daughter. And I want to create what I know to be true about children and organizing and anyone in organizing, but especially children, they need that space to play. Yeah. So while she does have a variety and a significant amount of toys, that's not my focus so much as does she have that space to play with those toys. That's the most important thing. And when they're growing that quickly, you have to make sure you're constantly doing an exit of things and you know a lot of gifts come in. You have to make sure that a lot of items that oh, aren't wow. age appropriate for her are going out as quick as they're coming in. Wow, so yeah. that's amazing. So in your business or in your focus, do you just work with seniors or you work with everyone or how does that work? So that's a really great question. We started as a true professional organizing company, helping families with those very tight closets, pantries, garages, mm -hmm. primary bathrooms play areas, there's always a space in the home that seems to be sticky for most people. And we're very busy, so it's hard to dedicate the time to get that out. So um, when Harvey hit in 2017, I had my whole September booked up. And in an instant when Harvey hit, I lost that whole thing. And people kept telling me, well, Elizabeth, you're a luxury service. You're not like a roofer or HVAC or plumbing you're a luxury. And so I really thought, okay, how do we turn organizing and take it from being a luxury 
to a needed service. Mm. And then we read about senior move management and helping organize and move seniors. Yeah. And I thought, okay, well, I know that the boomer generation is the largest generation and the one that's going to be in that transition. Mm -hmm. So let's really incorporate, incorporate our love and our passion for organizing and transition that into seniors. Mm -hmm. And so 95% of our business is now senior organizing and senior moves, but we love to take <laughs> on those home projects. It feels like you're like, going back to like the play yard where you first like mm -hmm. fell in love with the monkey bars. You're like, oh, I'm back to like the thing that I love. But we, we love all of it. We love helping the seniors move. We love the traditional organizing. So there's still 5% hope for me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I do your ideal client. Yes. <laughs> she's already examined your purse. Yeah. <laughs> she's like, oh, you got a lot going on. Yeah. <laughs> Well, the nice thing is we are a non-judgmental organization. <laughs> okay. Our tagline truly is order in judgment out because we we truly believe that you cannot help people and judge them at the same time. Those are two things that can never Venn diagram no matter how hard you want them to. So I know people are absolutely, they, they, they are turning red as I'm walking into their space like, I'm so embarrassed, but here's the thing. This is your home yeah. and our only goal is to make sure that it's a space that at some point when we leave is more efficient and more comfortable and more functional for you because it's, you're already going to have to run a track every day in your yeah. life, right? Like you yeah. have to get up, you have to go to work, you have to run this track every day. I just want to help take some of those unnecessary hurdles off of the track for you so that while you're running, you're not also having to jump the hurdles. <laughs> wow, well, I think that's amazing what you do. It's a needed service. And I think this segment will be good um, for families because I, I think we'll find that there are families like myself who are very busy, got a lot going on and need the help, but then also that are caring for their loved ones and their loved ones need this type of assistance as well. So I think you can kind of touch on a, a, both things. So yes. I think that's great. So you did mention the seniors and she said how her business 95% is focused on the seniors. So we're gonna talk about some ways and some tips to help seniors declutter. We know that's a big topic. We see that a lot, mm -hmm. me and Morgan um, and our whole team, when we go into seniors' homes to do assessments, we see a lot. There's a lot of seniors that are hoarding things from the 1950s and 1960s. Yep. And so it is a big need and it could be a big problem. It can also be a big safety hazard. Yeah, absolutely. But we do want to turn it over to our sponsors for just a moment. So we're going to take a short commercial break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back. Thank you. Singles, do you feel it? The feeling like it's time to start having fun again? If you do, then you're ready to celebrate with the Vincent Adventures. There's never been a better time to join than right now. Meet new people with a packed calendar of fun events, exciting adventures, and future memories. It's time to live life to the fullest, to high five, skydive, and feel alive again. That feeling is here at Events and Adventures. If you're single and ready to celebrate, visit eventsandadventures.com to get started. That's eventsandadventures.com. AT&T Fiber delivers a faster internet experience than cable. Ask me how to get 300 megabits per second for only $35 a month, plus taxes and fees, with no annual contract, no bundles required, and unlimited internet data included. Call Bus Up Houston Network at 832-895-5095. Again, that is Bus Up Houston Network at 832-895-5095. 5095 And this is Boss of Houston, where we look up, where we look up, stay up, and where we look up, stay up, stay up, and boss up. And this is Boss of Houston, where we look up, stay up, and boss up. Want to be a boss? Let's talk business.
Let's talk fashion. Let's talk health, fitness, community, lifestyle, and finance with Boss Up Houston. Saturday mornings at 10 a.m. It's Boss Up Houston, where we look up, stay up, and boss up. Are you single? Maybe you're divorced or new in town. It's time to meet your match with events and adventures. Whether you're low-key or adventurous, come hang out with tons of like-minded people at exciting group activities. The best part? Everyone is single. From happy hours and trivia nights to outdoor adventures and weekend getaways. Events and Adventures has something for everyone. We're all here for the same reason. So come be part of a community made for singles. Your match is waiting for you to make your move. Visit eventsandadventures.com to get started. That's eventsandadventures.com. Welcome back to Friendly Voices, the senior care podcast. And we have in our studio today, Elizabeth from, what's the name of your company? All Organized. All Organized. Wanted to make sure I said that just right. And we are talking about decluttering as it pertains to seniors. So she's going to give us some tips that seniors can do and families can do to declutter. But before we talk about those actual tips, let's talk about, Elizabeth, why it's even important. Why would you say that it's important that seniors declutter? Absolutely. That's a really great question. It's so important that seniors that want to remain in their home declutter because as we age, different medical devices are going to come into our life, most likely. You might be walking independently right now, and you might not be oxygen dependent right now, but at some point you might be walking with a mobility device, a scooter, a walker, even a cane. At some point you might be on oxygen and have to be hooked up to an oxygenated machine, and you'll be walking with what some of my seniors lovingly call their tails all throughout the house. <laughs> and you and don't want that, that cord, mm -hmm. that, that connection that is bringing oxygen into your body, the key to our survival to get um, bent around a corner, um, to have something slide over it. You don't want to impede that oxygen flow to your body. So it's so important to think about the home um, that you're in currently as your old home and really make that mindset to, if I want to remain in my home, it is not only important, but it's needed that I get organized and I declutter because I'm I'm taking my old home and I'm having to make it my new home to support who I am now. I'm an aging person and I want to independently and actively age, but I won't be able to do that in this current home. So having that first shift in mindset of I need to do this if I want to stay in my home is the very first and most important thing to do. Yeah, and I know we talk a lot about fall prevention mm -hmm. and really being proactive. Falls are, are some of the number one reasons why seniors even end up in the hospital. Mm -hmm. And there's a certain percentage that once they have that fall, they may never recover. Mm -hmm. The others, once they do have a fall within the next six months, they have a, a high probability that they will fall again. Mm -hmm. And so when we go in and we do assessments, we always do kind of like a glance of their house. Mm -hmm. Okay, show us your living spaces, <laughs> your bathrooms, all these things. And one of the major things that we're looking for when as it comes to safety or things that can make them fall mm -hmm. and we often often see things all over the place um and that's just a hazard for the falling mm -hmm. so that's it's, it's so important because it's not just them living in a nice space it's like it can be a life or death yes. if they have stuff out and I know that fire hazard too can be you know if they've got you know documents everywhere mm -hmm. and paper everywhere and newspapers you mm -hmm. know some of our seniors are still getting you know newspapers oh, every day papers. and magazines yes. and, you know if they're collecting those and those are all i mean that's a fire that's that's a hazard it not only for is. falls but for safety too well and then think if you do have that fall you know because sometimes it's still unavoidable and you haven't decluttered how are the emts even going to come in and get you on a stretcher we had a case where a gentleman had a stroke and he was in an extreme boarding situation and they couldn't even get the structure and pull them out. So you don't want to be in that position when you have minutes to exit a home to get that needed medical care where the items are prohibiting you from safety or life. So how do you start tackling that Absolutely. with the senior? Because a lot of it is just psyche. We we work with a lot of seniors and they are straight in denial. Denial mm -hmm. that they need any help, denial that they're, <laughs> Hoarders, not mm -hmm. all seniors are hoarders, but a lot of them are. 
how do you start having that conversation either as a professional or as a family member? Absolutely. Um, you're going to want to approach that conversation with a lot of empathy and respect. I know that this is your home. I know that you have lived here for 30, 40, 50 years sometimes. Um, but it's our job and it's our goal to make this a safe home for you. So what we need to do is take this in bite-sized pieces um, so that it's not overwhelming and we wanna work room by room and we wanna really look at what is still supporting you in this home and in your life. How do we make it more accessible? And also what's not supporting you and where would be a good place for this to go? Do we wanna run a storage? Do we wanna send it to a family member? Do we wanna take it to donation? Is there some value in this item? Do we wanna take it to a consignment? Or is it time, um, you know, none of those are great options. So do we need to, you know, talk about a trash situation? Are we gonna take some items to the dump or do we need to back up a dumpster? But you wanna take it in small sections. You don't wanna come in and say, hey, by tomorrow we're gonna to have this place gutted. You won't even recognize it. <laughs> Nobody wants that shocking, jarring change. Yeah. Um, and you do need to work with, again, just respect and empathy because this is their home that you are coming into. Um, and also, before you even get started, set the expectations. Hey, if you are expecting to continue to live in your home, this is the give that you are gonna need to have to get that take. Yeah, I think that's very important because it, it almost becomes like a negotiation, mm -hmm. especially when you come to a point where a senior really needs help. Again, mm -hmm. like I say, a lot of them are in denial. And it's kind of like the option, okay, well, if you don't get this help, then you have to yeah. move. Yeah, you almost, and I don't mean to compare it to like a conversation with a toddler, but here are your two choices. What are you going to choose in this situation? You can choose to make this a safe home living environment, or you can choose to go live in a community to get the help that you need. But we can't bring in the help if you don't make the choice to clear out this space. Yeah, and I like giving them that option because it still has them feeling empowered, like mm -hmm. they had say so in mm -hmm. the matter, which is very, very important. It us. is, because a lot of times they're still very cognitively functioning. Right. It's just the body that has started to go out and needs some help. Yeah, and so nobody who is of sharp mind, or, and even people who are having memory care issues, nobody wants to be treated like a little kid or told what to do. I'll exactly. tell you what, you tell me what I can't do, and I'm gonna do it twice and take a picture. Yeah. So um, I think bringing that respect and those options in is, um, is a great way to make progress in that downside. Yeah, and even with cognitive impairments, like my father has Alzheimer's, <laughs> he doesn't know what he's doing, but he's he's very quick to tell my mom or tell us, I am not a child, don't treat me like a child, mm -hmm. I know what I'm doing, and we know he, he can't, but mm -hmm. you know, it's just the way in which you approach it. Well, and it's very tempting as a caregiver to yeah. really put on that, you know, parenting hat and say, well, here's how we're going to do it. but. They're not little kids. They've had, you know, 80 plus years of life by this point. They're, uh, they have a lot of opinions on how they'd like things done. Right. So tell me about some tips for decluttering. So Absolutely. What, what can seniors do? What can families do? Professional organizer. Absolutely. Well, set the first tip and, you know, I, I'll tell this to anybody, set a timeline, but make it a realistic timeline. Mm -hmm. Hey, you're coming home from the hospital in six weeks. Here's what we're gonna do week one, week two, week three, week four. Actually pull out a calendar, mark that date, set that timeline. That's gonna be really important. Um, paperwork is such a big thing for people and um, they don't wanna get rid of six years of magazines because they're gonna sit down and read them. Okay, well, we need to find out a good way to store them properly so that they're not a fire hazard. Um, also, uh, seniors love to keep every piece of mail, tax, paperwork, everything. <laughs> every piece. So when it's a, <laughs> oh, every piece. When it's a big pile, the best thing to do with a big pile of paperwork is ironically turn it over because everything that's super unimportant has found its way to the bottom and the more important things are on the top. Oh, so you're building up confidence in yourself when you're like, oh, expired coupon. Oh, you know, old invitation. Oh restaurant that's now closed down because of you know the pandemic and then you get to the important things on the bottom um another important tip with paperwork is if it's a will a trust a power of attorney a medical durable power of attorney put those documents in a safe secure spot 
but not like a lockbox or a filing cabinet that's locked but no one knows where the key is. Mm -hmm. Put them in a secure spot where that person who is your, you know, medical power of attorney can access that document, but that it's in a known location. And then also, P.S., tell that person, hey, you're my medical power of attorney. Yeah. And if something happens to me, here's where you can find that document. So you're not having to call a bank and be like, well, it's in their safety deposit box, but yeah. I can't get access to that and they're unconscious in a hospital. Yeah. So get those vital documents, put them somewhere secure, but known, and tell the people that are on it. Yeah, and that's important because I know like my mom, she has a little lockbox, she has a code, and mm -hmm. I've always known, like, yeah, I know where the lockbox is and I know where the code. If mm -hmm. there's ever an emergency, go find that lockbox. Yes, yeah, and here is here's the current code. Right. Um, also, it's really hard for a lot of seniors, but shred anything that's over seven years old for tax documents, just get it out of the house. And there are places where a lot of people have a little in-home shredder and that's super great if you need to shred like a single and they document. they always break. Yeah, but that's my point. That's my point. They, they don't do well after about three little papers that are being yeah. shredded. And so many times we have boxes and boxes and boxes of paperwork that need to be shredded. So go to a place like FedEx, Office Max, Office Depot, you can bring in boxes of paperwork and for like $1.19 a pound, they will bulk shred right there in front of you. So you can do a lot of shredding very quickly, not have to sit there for like 36 hours, like <laughs> yeah. um, And then also, um, paperwork files, tax documents, um, get a small filing cabinet if they don't have one. Again, it doesn't have to lock or, or not lock, but just help them get things that we don't need to have access to every day, but into a filing cabinet so that it's known where it is. Here's, here's the, um, here's, here's my mortgage information. Here is my bank information. Have it all in one area. That's good for long-term storage. Um, and then also, if you're helping someone declutter, start in those places with little emotional attachment. Mm -hmm. And that's for two reasons. One, it's going to go a lot quicker. It's so much easier to purge a linen closet than it is that <laughs> big Tupperware tote of photos that you oh, could literally yeah. probably like put a small family in. Yeah. And when you start in those places with little emotional attachment, you're building up a lot of confidence when you do hit those high emotion areas. Um, hey, I was able to do this in my low emotion areas. Now I'm able to declutter these high emotion areas. And then when you do hit those high emotional areas, you know, the kids' clothes, the, the old <laughs> pet basket, the non linen closet, non junk drawer areas, then you have the confidence to get to those high emotion areas. Yeah, I like that because I call them small wins. So yes. for, for myself, I'm like, okay. Instead of tackling this big project, let me do this one right here. Mm -hmm. And once I complete it, I have like good feeling. Like, okay, yes. yeah, I'm doing good. Now I can move on to this next one. Yes, yeah, yeah. It's like when you eat that healthy lunch, you're less tempted to splurge on that big piece of chocolate cake after dinner because mm -hmm. you've had that small win in the day. Oh, good. Anything else you want to say as pertains to decluttering? Um, before we go to our commercial. Break. Absolutely. Um, our things are just things. They don't make us who we are. None of it gets to go with us when we go. I've never seen anybody get their burial plot and then a burial plot for their new <laughs> Nobody gets to do that. The ancient yeah. Egyptians, I think, were the last ones that was really in vogue yeah. for. So um, we, we put a lot of deep emotions into our objects. Yeah. But that's not where the memories live. It's not in that coffee cup. It's it's right in here and it's up in here. So let go with love and think of someone else that's really gonna enjoy that object that you're letting go of and it's gonna make that decluttering process a whole lot easier. I love that. Let go with love. I'm gonna I'm gonna remember that. And I like to um you know, give away things. I know uh, I live in the Pearland area, so there's an organization called Forgotten Angels. Yes. And it helps people with disability. And they have jobs, and, you know, you can donate, and there's this whole process. So it, it does make it easier to, to let go. Yes. It's interesting. We do want to learn a little bit more about your services in particular, and we know there's other companies in Houston area that provides similar services but as I said before we are going to go to a short commercial break don't go anywhere we will be back in just a moment thank you 
Events and Adventures knows how to make the most of being single. Get social, in person, try new things, and just have fun. Join Events and Adventures. We've been doing the single life right for over 30 years. 30 great events every month. Just visit eventsandadventures.com. AT&T Fiber delivers a faster internet experience than cable. Ask me how to get 300 megabits per second for only $35 a month, plus taxes and fees, with no annual contract, no bundles required, and unlimited internet data included. Call Bus Up Houston Network at 832-895-5095. Again, that is Boss Up Houston Network at 832-895-5095. Welcome back to Friendly Voices, the Senior Care Podcast. In studio, we have our guest, Elizabeth, and we're talking about decluttering as it pertains to seniors. So we talked about why that's such a very important topic and thing for families to really think about and consider. So now I just want to understand a little bit more about your services and what you do. So when I was looking on your website, Elizabeth, I saw that you help out with professional organizing, senior move manager, and moving. So can you tell us more about the professional organizing part of their business? Absolutely. Anybody that we work with, we're going to start off, uh, you can call or text our office number because we work with a multitude of generations. So a lot of our older clients only like to call. Um, Some of their adult children that are helping like to text. So you can easily reach out to us. Um, We'll set up a complimentary consultation and it really is a no pressure. We're just there to kind of put eyes on the project see what your needs are, see where you are in the process, and then send over a custom quote so you also know, you know, ballpark what this is going to go for. So what decluttering looks like is we're going to send in one, maybe two people, and we're going to talk about the areas in the home that really are having you struggle, where you're not feeling efficient, where it's feeling very tight. I kind of joke that living in a cluttered house is like wearing pants that are about three sizes too small. You can do it, but it's extremely uncomfortable anytime you're in that environment. So what we're trying to do, we're trying to be like your clutter coach where we're like, all right, three more laps and we're going to get, you know, back in those spaces. So what we do, we come in and we just look at every object, every item, and we talk about, is this something that we need to keep? Is this the best area for this item to live in? Oh, it's not, where would be a more um, appropriate place for this to be in? Oh, this isn't something you like. Let's go ahead and get that to donation. Oh, this is an old document. Let's put that in the shred bin. And what we can do with two people in four hours is typically clear an entire room. And not just clear it, but get it functional. Get the items back to where they go. Make it a space where you are no longer in danger, um, where you can function not just well, but with joy and um, you can easily move about your home. So it's it doesn't take as long as you think it's gonna take. Yeah, I would think it would take a lot longer. And then much like going to the gym and getting down to your goal weight, it's not gonna, you're not gonna maintain that goal weight if you don't keep going back to the gym and eating right like 95% of the time. So a lot of times we come in after we've done a big declutter session, three to six months later, and we call it um, like a retouch. Mm-hmm. So, um, We'll come back in and usually in three to four hours, we can tidy up the whole house again. Just like when your housekeeper comes and cleans the house, she's got to come back, right? Sometimes, you know, Amazon brings us a few too many packages. We're no longer using some of those older items. We just kind of help and go through and declutter again. I think that's so interesting because, you know, what we do as caregivers is we go into the home and we help them. A lot of times, as as we said, people need help with decluttering. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we'll let our caregivers do it if they're comfortable Mm -hmm. doing it, but it's really not their skill set nor in Mm -hmm. their job description. Mm -hmm. So there are many times when the care the clients will hire us and then they they're like, Oh, I need you to move my furniture, I need you to do this, Mm -hmm. I need you to do that and we're like, uh, you know, we really don't do that. (laughs) You have to kinda explain it to them. Yeah. 
And so we're able to recommend services like what you guys have. And so I think that's great. I know what's on a lot of people's mind is how much does this cost? Absolutely. Let's talk about how that works. Absolutely. Um, again, that's why we come in and do that complimentary consultation. We like to say that everybody's 3,000 square feet looks different, right? Mm -hmm. That would be like me asking, well, how much does it cost to paint my house? Well, you don't know if I'm in a one story with 10 foot ceilings or if I'm in a two story open concept where we're gonna need to pull in some scaffolding and extra long paint rollers. So during that consultation, we're really taking a look at what is the severity of the organizing need um, and how many people, how many hours. I would say typically, $1,500 is what we're looking at if it's all really good size house mm -hmm. um, and it's very, very full. Um, that's just kind of a ballpark range. Um, again, let us come and put some eyes on the project and we can give you a very accurate quote so you know what you're looking at. So, yeah, so not bad this. because we're talking about, in many cases, years and yes. years and yeah. years of things. So that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, that's that's great. Well, and here's an interesting fact about like decluttering and getting organized is things just seem to walk into our lives so easy, <laughs> right? But they don't ever grow little legs or say like, hey, you haven't used me in like three years. Mm -hmm. I can go. Yeah. So um, it's really easy and it's happened to everybody to get cluttered very quickly and decluttering can take a long time. So sometimes people can feel very judged very judged by needing to bring in some outside help yeah. but that's not what any organizer is going to do is judge you in this process we just want to bring in a lot of logic and the right questions to help that letting go process easier so i know like i don't know everybody has their process like i have a process where i literally and this always like frustrated my mom but i like i have to take all my job put it in the middle of the floor i sit in the middle floor and I literally go through each item. Mm -hmm. So, because of my whole thought is, well, it's my stuff. I'm the only one who organized my stuff. Mm -hmm. So how do you go through that process with the actual client, the senior? They sit down with you? Or? That's a great question. So typically a lot of our clients do have some mobility limitations where it's not easy to, like you said, dump out that box and sit on the floor. Mm -hmm. That's not gonna be for them. So what we do is we will um, bring in a chair for them into the room, or we will come to them if they're sitting in their favorite chair in the living room and we're over in the dining room, mm -hmm. and we will bring box by box at a time, and we will literally hold up an item and we will say, keep or goodbye. And if they say keep, we will continue that conversation about where is the best place for this to live? Do we still have space for this item? What is the significance of this item? Not necessarily a challenge, but like, genuinely needing to know the best place for the item or we'll say goodbye and then that's what we'll talk about is this donate does this need to go to a family member because so many seniors hold on to items in particular for their children yeah. but their children are now 60. so they have that third grade arithmetic book but their 60 year old <laughs> child is not necessarily interested in that and right. so we'll talk about if this is something important for you to keep we can put it in a shadow box so you can walk by it because now maybe your child is the mathematician for NASA. Um, or is this something that we could just tuck into a bookshelf for you? Or is this something that we could go ahead and just toss in the recycle bin? Was it that important to hang on to? So that's how we come to them. We have that conversation. We are basically like your arms, your legs, um, your logic in the process. It's very interesting. So if a senior, if they're so, you know, we come in when they're in the home. So mm -hmm. what about the seniors who are not going to be at home anymore? Or they're going to be, you know, moving to a, one of our assisted living or memory care communities in the area? Or, you know, what if they're, they're leaving their home? Absolutely. So um, we definitely, our goal is to help them stay in their home as long as possible too. But we're we're nowhere near the amazing service that you guys offer of helping people have that extension to stay in their home for as long as possible. So when it is time to move to a community for a higher level of care, we offer a custom floor plan where we're going to come in and measure every piece of furniture that you're interested in taking. Then we're going to go into your new apartment and measure each wall, each window, and put together this floor plan so you can see what can comfortably fit into your new space. 
Then we're gonna come in and actually physically pack the boxes and the items that you're wanting to take. We have our own in-house moving service, so we load those items right up onto our truck. She's a 26-foot retired Pinsky. We call her Big Daisy. <laughs> she takes all of your items to your new community. That's the person. Oh, that's our truck. Oh, that's that's truck. Yeah, sorry. Okay. Big Daisy is our truck. Comes to her <laughs> name Big Daisy. I'd probably just call her Daisy, but um, yeah, so our truck comes and takes all the items to your new community, and then we do a complete new home setup where we're going to mount that television, hang those curtains, hang up the art, put sheets on your bed, toilet paper in your bathroom, food in your pantry. I'm even going to plug in your coffee maker and make sure it says the right time and put your favorite mug right by that coffee maker because we've had all of those conversations in the pack-up process. And then we'll help either get the home staged to put on the market, but a lot of times our seniors have already sold their home, so we will get the house completely cleared out. Again, we'll get those items to donation, to their family members, um, to an estate sale company to do the liquidation, and then um, we'll do a make ready clean so that it's sparkling clean for the new owners to come in, and you are completely set up and integrating well into your new community. So does that fall under the senior move manager that or is, the moving? That is a, a combination of the senior move management as well as the moving services. So senior move management is the person that is not only packing the boxes and knows where to unpack all of the items, but they're there on the move day so that the senior doesn't have to kind of see mm -hmm. um, their home environment being you know, Take moved apart. Part. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and so they're there to instruct our movers, hey, that couch is a go, hey, that hutch is a stay. Mm -hmm. um, these boxes over here by this wall are going to the new apartment. These boxes on this wall are going to storage and all of these boxes behind us are gonna go to the donation center. And they're making sure that the truck gets loaded the right way. So we do stop A, stop B, stop C, mm -hmm. and no donation items get left at the apartment and no apartment items get taken to donation. Oh, wow. And so so then the moving part would be more so where you're taking everything out, mm -hmm. also putting it together. Oh, that's great. Mm -hmm. I know I absolutely hate moving. I mean, <laughs> so I do a lot of talks around town at different communities. And my first question is like, who loves moving? Yeah. And no one has ever raised their hand. It's just, it's just this weirdo that started a moving company. So yeah, yeah. nobody likes moving. I always said, if I have to move, you know, hire professional movers, pack it up, just take it. I think that's wonderful that y'all can do that. I would imagine that you have some great partnerships with communities here in Houston. Because that's definitely a service that's needed. We have a lot of seniors, like a lot of clients where surprisingly they have no family mm -hmm. or no family located here and they're really trying to manage on their own. Mm -hmm. So I can definitely um, see how that would be something that's, that's very, very, very helpful for our clients. Well, we definitely want to thank you for coming in today, Elizabeth. This was so informative. I know this is a topic that families can really, really benefit from. Is there anything else that you want us to know before we close up today? Um, just that our biggest challenge is letting people know that a service like ours exists. We are a very scheduled company. We're not hurting um, for incoming business, which that's a wonderful place to be in. Yeah. But nothing breaks my heart more than when we're moving in a new resident and their little neighbors are popping their heads out and um, <laughs> like, who are you? What are you doing? Who are you with? And we'll tell them and they'll all but slap us up the backside of our head and go, oh, well, where were you three years ago when I had to do this with my daughter-in-law? I wanted to throw her <laughs> off the roof. Or where were you last year when I had to do this on my own? I still have boxes to unpack. I, I just don't ever want to see a senior struggle living in their home, going through this downsizing process. So just letting people know that a service like ours is available is just the kindest thing anyone can do. I don't care if we, if you use us or not. Um, I just don't want seniors to have to struggle going through probably the biggest move of their life or their family to have mm -hmm. to, you know, fly in for a week, take a week of vacation just to fight tooth and nail to get them to get rid of 13 boxes of jelly jars. Mm -hmm. So... So if they, so spread the word, everybody, <laughs> if yeah. they want to get in contact with you, how do they do that? Absolutely. You can call or text our work number. It's 281-460-6534. We have a great website. It's uh, www.allorganized, past tense, organized, pro, P-R-O, dot com. And um, you can even uh, email us. It's info at allorganizedpro.com. And then if you want to get in touch with us at Friendly Faces, you can find us online at www.friendlyfaces.com. You can also search for us on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter, LinkedIn, and now TikTok. 
So we thank you so much for joining our episode today, and we hope that you stick around and join our other episodes as we air them. This is Friendly Voices, the Senior Care Podcast, and we will talk to you later. Bye-bye. Friendly Voices, the Senior Care Podcast.